I came from New York City to live the main life. I was hired to design outdoor footwear. I live the main life. We're looking for college grads, so come get your check. I came from Venezuela to leave the main life. I opened my own restaurant. Learn more about hundreds of Maine jobs and our tax program for college grads at liveandworkinmaine.com. Here's a look at what's coming up on this week's episode. We're the largest company you've never heard of. Tyler creates software for a lot of public entities. We make them a little mignonette sauce and we try to enjoy the sort of pomp and circumstance of, of oysters in the main coast. It's a very electric place to be and so fun to come to work. And this week at Myra Studios, we are hearing the music of Electric Heart. Hi everyone, I'm Erin O'Valley, my co-host Kevin Oates, and you're watching Main Life. An echo of an echo is the semblance of a sound And I press and I've waited with my ear upon the ground All of her I'll see you there Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair All of her I'll see you there After many Hi everyone, welcome to our home here at Myro Studios in downtown Portland. Kevin, you have exciting news to share. Yes, it is audition time for Maine Youth Rock Orchestra for our 2017-2018 concert season. Um, if you're accepted into Myro for next year, you get to perform with Guster so at Thompson's cool. Point Outdoors on August 12th. Um, so we take between 25 and 30 students a year. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find out all, all information about auditions and our organization at MainYouthRockOrchestra.org. Great opportunity. Well, here this week on Main Life, we didn't have to travel too far, actually. Our main business segment is in Yarmouth. We got to tour Tyler Technologies, another great main company. And then Places and Spaces, Cloudport Coworking, awesome. Multispace. Yeah, you've been there. Oh yes, it's um, awesome. And then in our lifestyle segment, we toured Nonsuch Oysters and literally got to taste oysters right there on the ocean from the farm. That's heaven right there. That's so good. <laughs> and we are hearing the music this week at Myra Studios of Electric Heart. Take a listen. Thanks so much for having us. We can't go back to the start Chasing the ghost of our memory These days the world seems so hard Years flying by like a daydream All I know Somehow we continue to make it, don't we? All I know is love still is. Somehow we'll continue to make it, won't we? We can't erase what is done. Writing the wrongs won't be so simple. We are proud to support Maine businesses. Not only are they our customers, they are the lifeblood of our state. Whether they're entrepreneurs who have come here to try to grow a business and make a life, or whether they've been in a sixth generation business in Maine, we're proud of them all. Hey everyone, this week's business segment takes us to Tyler Technologies in Yarmouth. And while I've never been, I do know a handful of happy employees who tell me it's the culture and positive environment that Tyler provides that they really enjoy. Tyler Technologies is the largest company in the United States who creates software for the public sector. We're the largest company you've never heard of because Tyler creates software for 
a lot of public entities, school systems, court systems, uh, municipalities, but it's sort of behind the scenes. We realize that what we're doing is helping this company grow. Um, and because our company serves the public sector, sort of by de facto, we feel like we're helping our, our communities because we're creating software that makes the jobs of those public servants a lot easier. I'm a software engineer. I started here about six months ago. I knew people from Tyler that loved working for them. They valued their employees, and I really wanted to get into a company where they were successful, valued their employees, and close to home. And Tyler offers all of that. I have a team of designers and researchers, and we actually design Tyler software. The people on the team are fantastic. They're phenomenal. They're always coming in with new ideas, new concepts, and I'm actually learning things from my team members. And I appreciate that because I actually grow as a person and also as a professional. It's just a great opportunity, a great company, and they love to see their employees grow. So we've been growing pretty steadily for the past 50 years. And specifically here in Maine uh, is our ERP and schools division. We have four other divisions nationwide. But this division is slated to hire 500 people in the next 10 years. And to facilitate that, we have a 90 some odd thousand square foot building going out. We hired 206 people in 2016. You know, everyone in my life that I know was basically back here in Maine, so just knew it was the right fit when I came, just talking about the type of work that was done here and really the type of culture. I had only been working with three or four other people at my pre previous jobs. Here, I love being able to walk around, say hello to people. It's nice just to be able to spread your wings and, and meet a wide variety of people. Tyler likes to hire what I call the whole person. Yes, we want people who are really good at coding, creating websites, security experts, but we want them to have a little spark. We want them to be a good fit here, and that means you get involved with the rest of your coworkers, you serve on committees, you participate in charity events. You have a life outside of Tyler. We don't want to hire people who only want to work. The opportunities that Tyler presented for growth were very intriguing to me. I think the culture is that everyone really wants to work together. We're a big company, and a lot of us have individual parts that need to come together. Part of my job is to sell our company to candidates that we want to bring on board. Um, I get to talk about all the great things that our company does every single day, and I get to make a match between a hiring manager and a candidate who wants a new job, and that's really satisfying. And there's so many exciting things happening here, from new platforms to new designs. I love coming to work every day. I get to talk to people from away who want to live here. I get to work with college kids who are looking for their first job. And I get to work with people who are changing careers or are the top in their careers, who come here because they're looking for that work-life balance. We sit on 66 acres of property that connects to the Yarmouth Trail system. And so if you need to get outside and clear your head, you can either grab snowshoes from behind the desk and go snowshoeing in the afternoons. You can bring your mountain bike to work and go out for a mountain bike ride with a bunch of your friends. You can go for a walk. You can walk all the way to Cousins Island if you want. It is a beautiful place to be. We have the cute little town of Yarmouth here with some great restaurants. And shopping is right up the street in Freeport. So lots to do at lunchtime. We adopted a Portland Trail, so it's called the Tyler Trail now. And once the weather clears up, we'll be taking a group out to, to walk our trail. We want people to be involved in the community, and that's partly why we do a lot of those charity events and a lot of sponsoring um, local events or parks. I feel like I have a family here at Tyler. They support our growth and where we feel comfortable. Working here has been wonderful. Great experience. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm looking for the perfect match. I need someone who's good with kids. I could definitely use a helping hand. I want someone I can really talk to. Please say a command. Someone who always has my back. I just want someone who really gets me. Hi, I'm Sharon. Nice to meet you. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. Hi everyone, welcome back. In this week's Places and Spaces, we are at Cloudport in Portland, Maine. No, it's not a bar. However, if you sign up for a membership, adult beverages are included. Cloudport is a co-working multi-space. Take a look around. 
Cloud Port is a co-working multi-space located at 63 Federal Street down in the edge of the Old Port and we've been open since September. So when you walk in, expect to be greeted by our Cloud Port team at our concierge desk. You'd be walking into a, a really warm, welcoming community of entrepreneurs, business owners, um, and bring their businesses to a space that allows for networking and collaboration and really walking into a, a big family. We've got over 100 members now. It's been really nice to see the partnerships, the friendships, and the business deals that go down on a daily basis with just a really warm, welcoming community here. We've found that we're attracting very talented entrepreneurs. When people find us that really just want to get out in the community, feel productive at work, feel inspired, and get to know new people around Portland. So you don't have to be a member to hold a meeting or an event here. Um, so we encourage people to inquire about anything they could possibly imagine, from a cooking class, holding one here, to a baby shower, to a rehearsal dinner, forums or seminars for business, into a cocktail reception because we're able to kind of host both of those things in a professional way. And then, you know, small meetings where you might just want to get out of the office and come downtown Portland, since we're right near Restaurant Row, and um, just a new space to hold any type of meeting into a social event. That combination works really well here. We pride ourselves in being a co-working space where you can have an event that's warm and inviting and asking for you to hold events here. My favorite part of this space would be the people in it. As beautiful as our build out is, the people really make the space. We're very much about community here and we've attracted really beautiful personalities and awesome people that are giving back to this area in Maine uh, a lot. So it's a very electric place to be and, and so fun to come to work. It's been great to be a part of it. We are back in our Fiat, heading to have a quintessential Maine experience at None Such Oysters, a boutique oyster farm in Scarborough. Can you think of anything better having oysters on the ocean in Maine as they are being harvested? Well, they tell me that they cannot keep up with demand, but they are working hard to produce over 50,000 oysters a month this summer. Well, here we are at Pine Point on the working waterfront on Scarborough's relatively new uh, pier. And we're very lucky because Scarborough has uh, allowed us to perch our floating oyster nursery right here at this pier. And this is where we grow the baby oysters in the first phase of their life before we take them out onto our farm. It takes about two to three years in Maine to grow an oyster. We count basically on an, an inch a year, and while that seems like an incredibly long time, when you actually start the beginning of the summer and they're just like a millimeter or two, and you see how many times they've doubled their size by the end of the summer, it's still an amazing, amazing process. There are eight bins with uh, mesh on the bottom that hold up the baby oysters and we've got a water flow system through it so that the oysters are constantly filtering water and they feed by absorbing the nutrients um, in the water. We talk a lot about this filtering system and how it can clean up polluted areas and as the oysters clean up the environment all sorts of other marine species are returning to the harbor. It's really exciting. In the oyster industry we're, we've appropriated a word from the wine industry which is terroir which refers to the impact an environment has on the species it's growing. So what a lot of people don't appreciate or just don't know is that up and down the east coast with very few exceptions everybody is growing the same species of oysters, which is the Chrysostria virginica oyster. Now what makes them different is the environment that they're growing in. Mm -hmm. So here at Pine Point, we're, we're just a stone's throw from the mouth of the Saco Bay, and then we're also at the foot of the biggest estuary in Maine, which is the Scarborough Estuary. And so at low tides, the, uh, a completely different ecosystem is really ushering down on our farm, bringing much fresher water and tons of seagrass and these two sort of forces are playing out on our farm. So we've got about 600,000 oysters in bags, in gear, and we've got a few hundred thousand on the bottom waiting to finish off and grow and be harvested. So the second and the third sort of steps in the cycle, we go from the nursery to these floating bags and then we put them on the bottom where they finish. We are out here every day doing something or other, and then all of these bags need to be flipped. 
every week in the crazy fouling season and then every two weeks pretty much other than that just to keep all of the algae and other growth off of them so that so that water is filtering through. And a lot of Maine um, businesses buy them? Restaurants? Or oh yes, absolutely. Well, we prioritize Maine. We want to serve as many of them as locally as possible. And then when we have enough, we ship them out of state. We've had them in the Grand Central Oyster Bar in New York oh, and cool. Cleo in Boston. We've had them in some really fun places. James Beard House out here. Um, you know, in the summer, the, the water can be quite warm, so it's, it's, it's a, often a surprise to people to taste a warmer oyster. And the advantage of tasting a warmer oyster is also that um, sometimes when things aren't super chilled, there's a little bit more flavor, so you get a better sense of the flavor profile when you have something that's not super chilled. We make it a nice little oyster bar it. here. So you come out and do these tours? We do. Um, every year since we started offering them two years ago, we've had like over 200 people come and sit on our boat and eat oysters. That's awesome. We make them a little mignonette sauce and we try to enjoy the sort of pomp and circumstance of, of oysters in the main coast. This is so beautiful. In the heart of your farm. I know. It's a wonderful way to communicate with people. Beautiful. Well, if you really want to appreciate the miroir, or the environment that is making our oyster what it is, then the best way to do it is just free of anything, and then you can go to town with the sauces. This is uh, such a cool experience. Thank you so much. This, my friends, is called Main Life. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my gosh, so good. This week on Maine Tales, meet our furry friend, Ollie, from Falmouth. And a thank you to Mom Meg for sending in those adorable photos of Ollie. Ollie would also like to thank all of his veterinarians over at Falmouth Veterinary Hospital for taking good care of him. And if you'd like your furry friend to be featured on Main Life, you can email us a video or some photos at info at mainlifemedia.com. And we're hearing another song from Electric Heart, this time a cover of Anita Baker's Sweet Love. Time now to meet our main innovator and creator. Here's this week's Game Changer. We support Game Changers because it's the only outlet of its kind that seeks out and celebrates this kind of innovative and creative talent here in Maine. Welcome back to Game Changers. I'm Jess Knox, your host. I'm pleased today to be with Julia Hansen from the Yellow Tulip Project. And you may know that from time to time we have Game Changers from last season come and tell us about the progress that they've been making. So Julia, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the progress you've made from last year. Um, so just to give some background, I created a project called the Yellow Tulip Project, um, which is meant to raise awareness about mental health um, and try to smash the stigma associated with it and just bring hope and light into people's lives. Um, I created this last year after losing my two closest friends to suicide while struggling with my own suicidal thoughts and depression. Um, luckily I was able to see the hope and beauty still out there in the world and I wanted to spread that with other people. So I created the project and April 28th 
was our Tulip Project's birthday, and in this year, it's been incredible. Um, I remember talking with my mom, being like, oh, what was if we get like 10 followers on our Facebook page, and now we're over like 1,500. Um, and the support and love from everyone is so unbelievable, and it just shows the prevalence of mental illness, but how there's so much support out there as well. Well, I saw your, your TEDx talk earlier this year, and the reception was amazing in the hall for that. When you think about uh, what the opportunities are to expand the impact of this project in the yeah. next year, what do you, what do you think? Um, my goal is to get a lot more schools involved mm. and have school outreach programs, and then having actual like advocacy groups within schools, um, maybe like Yellow Tulip Clubs or something um, that can have open dialogue about mental illness and make people feel less alone. So that's right now just reaching out to schools and getting our name but our message most importantly out there that you're not alone. Well, it sounds like you're already having an impact and looking forward to what you're doing in the future. If folks want to get involved and be supportive of the project, where do they go? So we have a Facebook page, we're getting an Instagram. We have a website. I'm very happy to talk with schools or find ways on how to bring our project to schools. We actually have like a little packet on ways to start conversations around mental illness or ways to bring hope and support into schools. So just find us on the Facebook page and message us and we're, we're very happy to meet with them too. Well, that sounds great. Thanks for telling us about your project and we look forward to doing whatever we can to support your Thank success. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again to Red Thread and Town & Country Federal Credit Union for supporting our Game Changer segment. And thank all of you for watching this week. Before we go... Yes, we have one more song from Electric Heart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Come, my lady. She's coming to get me. Cause I've been doing wrong Karma lady She won't forget me Lord, I've been so low down The sins I've collected The pain I've inflicted I never meant to do him wrong Tried to resist it, temptation insisted. Now I know it won't be long. Lady, she's 
coming to get me Cause I've been doing wrong 